you look at those and and you determine if 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 uh, I've given you enough information over the years to to do that. Okay, number t number one thing that I want to talk about this morning is the Old Testament law. This is now in your notes. I'll get to that in just a few moments. The Old Testament law and the change of charge of inconsistency. I find it very frustrating when I read or hear columnists and pundits. Pundits. I don't. Everybody's got an opinion, and don't give your opinion until you have the whole facts. Because what you say in the morning, you may change in the evening once all the information comes out. Our journalists, and I see this quite often, that journalists dismiss Christians as inconsistent because, quote, they pick and choose which of the rules in the Bible to obey. When we say the Bible says that, you name it, especially marriage, same-sex relationships, and many other things that the Bible says, particularly in the Old Testament, they say, why do you pick and choose which one you want to believe and which one you don't want to believe? What I hear most often is Christians ignore lots of Old Testament texts. I hear that a lot on TV. About eating raw meat or pork or shellfish. Not excusing people for breaking the Sabbath not wearing garments woven with two kinds of material and so on it goes, if the Old Testament says. And that, then they condemn homosexuality. We in America, we say, well, the Bible, the, the Old Testament does say that if your children disobey, you stone them. I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, if you find your wife, if, you, if a person finds a person in adultery, take them out and stone them. I agree with that. But we don't do that. We would get thrown in jail and get stoned. <laughs> if you can't happen, it's not going to happen. If we try to stone our kids for disobeying us, we would be put in the electric chair. If we shake our kids to death, we are going... I, I just recently came across one of a person that I know who shook his child to death. He, he may have been accidentally, but he, I was so sad to see that, but it can happen to any of us if we're not careful. And so when they say, are you just picking and choosing what you want to believe about the Bible? And they have a, they have a legitimate concern. It is not that I expect everyone to have the capacity to understand that the whole Bible is about Jesus and God's plan to redeem his people. Not everybody knows that. But I vainly hope that one day someone will access this common sense at least to talk to informal theological advisors before leveling the charge against its consistency. In other words, I wish these pundits would call me up and say, uh, Pastor Charles, I have a question. Why is so many Christians inconsistent as to what they want to believe? They say homosexual is right, uh, and they say it comes from the Old Testament, our same-sex marriage and so forth, and yet we see the same Bible says to stone your kids if they disobey. Or if someone is in adultery, you are allowed to pull them out of the bed and stone them. So why don't we do all this? There are many laws in the Old Testament that we don't obey. Why you pick and choose? First of all, let's be clear that not only in the Old Testament do we have in the Old Testament that has prescriptions about homosexuality. The New Testament, by the way, has plenty to say about it as well. Even Jesus says in his discussion on divorce which we don't take serious today. Matthew 19, verses 3 through verse 12. So you need to write that verse down if you want a New Testament. Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 12. That the original design of God was one man, one woman, to be united as one flesh, and failing that, 
Verse 12, persons should abstain from marriage and from sex. Matthew chapter 19. Well, however, let's get back to considering the larger issue of inconsistency regarding things mentioned in the Old Testament as no longer practiced by the New Testament. There are things in the Old Testament that they practice that we no longer practice in the New Testament. Most Christians don't know what to say when they're confronted about this. Here's a short, brief thought on the relationship of the Old Testament to the New Testament. How are we, and this is what we are doing in our series of trying to bridge together the Old Testament with the New Testament. The Old Testament obviously devotes a great amount of space in describing sacrifices that were to be offered in the tabernacle and later the temple to atone for sin so that worshipers could approach a holy God. There were certain rituals that every person had to perform before they could worship God. I think that's still a great thing. I think each of us, before we come to church on Sunday morning, we should go through a ritual of doing certain things that would help us worship God. Most many people who get up in the morning, before they get to church, they've had a fight, they've argued, they fussed, they've kicked the dog, they've watched television that's no good, they are disgusted, they are mad, and when they enter into the church door, they are in no way, shape, or form ready for worship. And when they walk into church, they see someone they don't like, and they're mad that they're here, and they're just about ready to turn around to go back home. Is that not true? That was not allowed in the Old Testament. Before you could worship God, there were certain rituals that you had to go through with to make yourself qualified to worship, to atone for sins that worshipers could approach a holy God. As part of that sacrificial system, there was also a complete, a complex set of rules for ceremonial purity and cleanliness. There, there, it was specific. If I were to say to you this morning, before you come to church, you first of all, you need to take a bath. Now, I take my bath on Tuesday and hope it lasts through the next Tuesday. <laughs> But I would say that we need not only to perhaps take a physical bath, which is very depressing when I go to the cancer center and, 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 and you have people from <coughs> Eastern Kentucky come in and you can smell them all the way from Eastern Kentucky. You just, I don't like that. You know. Uh, but you know, you just have to go on. And so, but you could not approach, you could not approach a holy God filthy. Outside or inside. You, can, I, you would not go visit the President of the United States dressed like a tramp. You would never get in the White House. When you come to church, you are approaching God. This is where we this is where collectively we meet God. This is why we approach God. Now God doesn't kill us in the New Testament, but He would not allow us to serve He would not even come close to us in the Old Testament. Okay. You can you could only approach God in worship if you ate certain foods and not others, wore certain forms of dress refrain from touching a variety of objects and so on. That was laid out. That was a rule. So here's what I'm going to do with you folks. I'm going to give you a set of rules what you cannot do before you come to worship God. Now, this group would say that's fine, we do that. But I guarantee you that would not... But in some churches, you have to wear a bonnet. 
you have to wear a dress, you have to wear a tie. You know, I mean, there is some rules that some, and I quit doing that. I remember, in our, in back in Victory Baptist Church, I had a bunch of rules. If you're going to teach a class, here's what you got to do. You remember that? If you're going to sing in the choir, here's certain issues that you got to do as if we were stupid. Why do you have to tell people how to, to serve God? They, they should study the Word of God. They should understand that you're worshiping God. This is how you should act. Why, do we, why does preachers have to control what people do? I don't want to control you. Because if I want to, I can't even control myself, let alone my wife and children and the grandkids. So why should I try to control you? Let God control you. I saw one of my faithful members this morning in a car going to Columbus with my sister-in-law, and I almost said, My goodness, ma'am, you can get up this early in the morning and go to Columbus, but you can't get up to come to Sunday school. Now that's what I wanted to say. But I did. I just said it on tape. And obviously that person doesn't get on tape, so she will never hear it. Now I wanted, I wanted to say that. I would. Yes, I know you would, and that's why you're not the pastor. And uh, so, and, and so, I had, and, and I mean, though I may have felt that, it's not my place to say that. And secondly, it is not my place to bring guilt on you for doing something that you should do from your heart. And I have learned that over the years. Have I? Thank you. Now, it doesn't mean I don't think it. Yeah, that's right. And, but I tell you what I am, but I can share with you that I've seen that person every day this week. Every single day this week, we have ate together, and we have fellowship together. And I have acted like nothing has happened, and nothing has happened. You follow me? It should come from your heart to do the Lord's work, and it should come from your heart to respond, even when people are... You know, so, but in that day, you couldn't do that. The validity conveys over and over that human beings are spiritually unclean and can't go to God's presence without purification. That was the, that was the point. It was to illustrate with all this cleanliness that you, uh, you that we're all sinners and we can't go into the presence of God without purification. That was the point. They, they were constantly washing their hands. They were constantly cleaning the outside because God wants to illustrate we are sinners and we need to be cleansed. If I'm going to go to God and request something of God, first thing I want to ask God is, God, cleanse my heart. I cannot approach God with filthiness, even today. Well, but even in the Old Testament. Many writers hinted that the sacrifices and the temple worship regulations pointed forward to times beyond this. If you write down these verses, 1 Samuel chapter 15. Well, let's just look at it. Why don't we do that? 1 Samuel chapter 15. 